Hello Kitty! Let's continue with our big book project. In the last video, I spoke about my past comic book creation process and how I experimented in changing a few steps to see which methods are essential and which ones work better for me. It only took me two short story comic books to wonder if I could dispense with the thumbnailing stage because it was physically painful. It was the stage that would cramp up my drawing hand. It even went to a point where my hand would just refuse to hold a pencil. I would try to pick it up, but it just wouldn't hold a grip. So I was forced to take breaks, and I used a makeshift hot compress to alleviate it. I mean, there was something wrong with the way I drew thumbnails. Anyone could see it. Except me. Yeah, I learned my lesson. They weren't really thumbnails, more like mock-ups of the final drawn comic book panels. Thumbnails are supposed to look more like this. But I don't really have a use for it, you know? The simplified drawings? I thought I needed thumbnails to help me compose the layout of comic book panels. And I know it would allow me to make several variations of a single panel in a short span of time and then that would allow me to pick the best looking one before creating the final art. I guess that is why artists make thumbnails, even if they aren't showing it to anyone for approval. But this is what I notice with my sketching, with my approach to sketching. I tend to be focused on two things, direction and contrast. And that tends to produce a composition that I am usually 99% satisfied with. As soon as I start to see direction or contrast or both showing through my sketch, that's all that matters. I think this is why I don't see the point in making thumbnails to exhaust all options. This doesn't mean that the composition I end up with is the best one I could do. No kitty, that's not my point. It could be the case that I could have drawn it slightly better. But if I see that the picture I came up with already drives home the message, so to speak, or it effectively communicates emotion, then I don't feel an urge to redraw it. Using tactile art tools has also subconsciously affected my decision making when I draw. It's taught me to make the most of the short time that I have. Pencils get shorter, ink runs dry, paint tubes empty. Nothing lasts forever. I gotta get things done now. This is what I mean when I spoke about the sketch gym at Cat's Art School. The sketch gym is a time and place where we work with our hands more than our minds. This makes us avoid word thinking. Word thinking is a term I picked up from cartoonist Scott Adams. His definition pertains to a thinking error that loses grip in reality by getting lost in definitions and semantics. I've adopted this term when referring to the side effects of living inside our heads too much. Side effects of being deficient in tactile manual work. And the side effects of a positive feedback loop. They say that vocal and visual signals become less important as tactile signals intensify. You're experiencing this when you get sucked in the moment. And this is what makes us focus on what's effective. Alright, that's it for now. Please go and enjoy your day, and I'll talk to you soon.